I feel like I'm being lapped on a racetrack. I've got health problems, and so uh, it's making me kind of homesick. Well, yesterday rained all day and most of the night. Uh, today is looking much nicer. Of course, the issue is I live out of a minivan, and so I want to be outside most of the day, and I usually am, but I do have some health problems, and once in a while, those health problems mean that I just don't want to deal with being outside when it's chilly and rainy and damp and all, so I spent much too much time inside the van yesterday, and uh, I'm happy to see some sun out today so that I can get outside and be out where I want to be. So first things first uh, is not going to be coffee. We're going to go find a little hiking trail and just walk a little bit. Then we'll get coffee and food and all the other things that uh, you're supposed to do in the morning. Uh, I'm in Santa Rosa today, which is a city about an hour north of San Francisco. And there are a bunch of places to walk around here. Uh, but I think we're going to head out to Sebastopol, which is a little town just outside of Santa Rosa. Fantastic little town. And the reason I'm going there is, one, there is a little hiking trail just outside of town, uh, just a few miles away from where I parked here last night. Uh, and there's also a bunch of great coffee places in Santa Rosa because coffee is always on my mind. So as soon as we do a little walk, get out and move a little bit, then we'll go get some coffee, hopefully some really good coffee today. So right where I parked last night, there's a trail uh, that runs kind of the length of Santa Rosa. And I've walked a little bit of it from time to time. And I would have walked it last night had it not been really raining. Uh, and it was pretty chilly too uh, by the time I parked last night. I do like to take a walk around the neighborhood, usually wherever I park. Uh, I normally move around to different areas every night to park. and. Uh, so just as a way to get to see what the neighborhood is like, I'll walk around the block or just take a walk on a trail if there is one. So uh, normally I would have walked on that trail, uh, but I just really wasn't feeling good. It was just not, not a good day for me. So with the rain and all, I didn't do much of anything. So I'm, I'm extra geared up today to be outside more than I normally am. And I normally want to be outside all of the time anyway. Okay, so here we are. Uh, this is the Laguna de Santa Rosa Trail. Uh, this is just outside of the town of Sebastopol. Uh, this is a very short trail and a flat trail. Uh, I've heard that it is good for bird watching and that's about all I know about it. Uh, it is feeling rather chilly. I'm tempted to grab the jacket, but I should probably warm up as I move around. So let's, uh, let's skip the jacket. Oh, it looks like it's a bigger trail than I thought. There's a couple of different trails to take. So we can go around the field, or we can go down across out to Occidental Road. That's the one that I knew about. Let's just walk and see, see which way we uh, feel like taking. I've passed by this trail several times because that's the little highway to get to Sebastopol. So every time I go to Sebastopol or leave Sebastopol is usually with this little road uh, as I am almost always around Santa Rosa lately. Uh, but I never really see very many people in the parking lot here and it always kind of surprises me. So here we have to make a decision about the trails that we're going to take. And I'm pretty sure I don't want to go this way because of all the rain, that trail looks pretty wet. So I think we'll uh, I think we'll avoid that. There, are, our decision is made. An easy decision has been made. Uh, this way is actually a little bit wet too. I uh, just passed a couple, and they told me that it's pretty much impassable uh, just up ahead. And this spot is just a small sampling of what it will be like up there. Uh, they did tell me if I want to get through this area to stay all the way to the left, which I have, but I've already sunk up to my ankles. Uh, and I'm thinking this is probably not 
going to work out so good. So as much as this is uh, pretty out here, and I would like to just trot on through, um, it's, it's not that easy walking through here. So let's, um, let's just call it quits here and we'll, we'll come back to this spot another day. It sure is pretty out here. Uh, that couple did say that there's a bunch of birds out here, probably because there's no people out here to bother them because the trail is flooded out. Oh, well. <laughs> You know, one of my shoes got pretty wet and muddy, so I try to clean it up a little bit since I am uh, going to try to go into a fancy coffee shop. Oh, my pant leg is all muddy, too. I've got a little cleaning to do here, don't I? This isn't going to work. You know, for times like this, this is why we have two pairs of shoes. I'll just put my backup shoes on. I would prefer to wear these shoes anyway. Uh, these are a true barefoot shoe, which is what I normally like to wear. Uh, I was just wearing the other shoes because they're a better walking and hiking shoe if it's going to be wet and muddy. But um, I'm going to have to let them dry out before I can actually get them cleaned off totally. So we'll just put the backup shoes on. My preferred shoes anyway. Okay, that feels so much better. I like these shoes a lot better than the ones I was wearing. Uh, these are uh, barefoot shoes made by a company called Wildling. Uh, they're a wool construction and they do have some waterproof membrane or something in them. There's some kind of waterproofness to them, uh, but the outside of them does get wet and they stay wet for a long time. Uh, these are all synthetic. Uh, these are made by a company called Ultra and they're their Lone Peak uh, version of their shoes. and. These, I really like these for a long time. They were my favorite shoe, but um, I just have not found them to be quite so comfortable, but they are great for hiking because they've got a really aggressive tread on them. Although you can see the tread is wearing down quite quick, quickly on these, uh, much more quickly than the last pair of Ultra Lone Peak shoes I've had. I don't know why I'm having trouble saying that, uh, but they're a great shoe for walking and hiking but uh, they are quite dirty now, so they're gonna need uh, good cleaning once they dry out. I find it's just easier to let them dry. They dry really quickly on their own. Uh, then once they're dry, I just bang them and uh, uh, knock the dirt off of them that way. I can actually uh, wash those off too uh, if I need to uh, pretty easily since they are all synthetic. Uh, these wool shoes are a little harder to clean, so try not to get these wet. if. I have uh, the option to not wear them on a muddy trail. I leave these behind, obviously. Well, I'm thinking I should probably make a little breakfast before I move on, as if I just go get coffee on an empty stomach, that's not so great. So I'll just make a little sandwich uh, right quick. So I'm gonna toast some bread. I have some of this really good local sourdough. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's from a little French bakery here. Uh, in the Santa Rosa area, and it's sold all over the place. It's quite popular. This is not ketchup. Uh, this is yellow bird uh, jalapeno hot sauce. If uh, you don't know, this is my favorite hot sauce. Uh, yellow bird is my favorite hot sauce. I go back and forth between the jalapeno one here and the um, serrano one here. So I keep them both around and just use uh, them both from time to time. But what with the jalapeno here and here is breakfast. Nice little sandwich. One egg, so uh, not a big sandwich, but a little something to eat. That was a tasty little sandwich there. Uh, I think the yellow bird really makes it. Um, I have had a number of people message me and email me about yellow bird and tell me that they went to their local Trader Joe's or their local grocery outlet, uh, two stores I shop in quite often, 
uh, and they tell me they didn't have any yellow bird there. I don't, I don't understand. And I keep saying to people like Trader Joe's is never going to carry yellow bird and grocery outlet is never going to carry yellow bird. Well, I went in grocery outlet the other day and they had yellow bird. In fact, I bought this bottle from them. I think it was four bucks for the bottle. So, you know, yellow bird's not the cheapest of hot sauces, but um, that is a very good price for it. Now, I was surprised. I, I didn't think grocery outlet would ever carry yellow bird, but there it was. So I don't know if that's uh, going to be uh, a limited thing because I've, I've since been to a different grocery outlet and they didn't have any yellow bird for sale. So maybe it's just going to be the odd store will carry it. I was quite happy to find it. Um, probably going to have to go back to that store and get another bottle because like my my other favorite here is getting to be pretty low, the Serrano. So I should have bought more when I was there. But um, yeah, it's kind of cool to see that grocery outlet, at least some of them, are carrying Yellowbirds. I still am going to say, though, I don't think Trader Joe's is ever going to carry Yellowbird. I, I can't see that ever happening. But maybe never say never because grocery outlet is on board. Cool. Okay, I can use a cup of coffee, so let's uh, get into town and uh, go get ourselves a cup. Uh, there's been a steady stream of people here that park for a minute, walk out, and look and see how flooded and bad the trail is and turn around and leave. Uh, I've been here for quite a while since I made a little bit of breakfast, uh, so I've been watching all these people. It's kind of too bad. Um, I was one of them, of course. Now we are heading in that direction, which means, see all that traffic? It's a line of traffic going into Sebastopol. This is the reason I don't usually drive out here to Sebastopol. Uh, traffic can be a little bit snarly out here. I will never be able to understand why the traffic is so bad around Sebastopol. Really don't get it. But it's like this every time I've been here. Uh, it's not too terribly bad, but uh, it's just always a string of traffic going through town. I don't know where people are going to. I don't know where they're coming from, but uh, they are driving through Sebastopol all day and night, it seems. Now, we are at the Barlow, and this is a, a big uh, shopping center, and there's a bunch of restaurants and stores. There was a couple that I met uh, the other day that told me that there's a coffee called Taylor Lane, and they make the best uh, decaf coffee uh, out there. And so I thought maybe I should try it. Uh, not too far away, so we'll pop over to their little cafe here and give it a try and maybe buy some as well because I always need to keep coffee on hand. That was incredibly good. Uh, I was a little surprised at first with my first sip because uh, their espresso that they use for the latte that I got uh, is not overly bitter. Uh, they apparently use a lighter roast espresso, which I really like. Uh, so that was a pleasant surprise, although I was surprised uh, when I first took a sip of it. Uh, so really good place. I also bought some beans, of course, since I was in there. I bought some decaf because that's what was suggested to me. Uh, my intention was to buy two cups of coffee, have them make me a decaf, and then make me something else. Uh, but I figured since uh, that couple that told me about the decaf here uh, raved about it so much, I just was going to take their suggestion and just go ahead and buy it. Um, it looks pretty good. It is a medium roast decaf, so uh, it's not my preferred roast level, but if you've been following my troubles of finding a light roast uh, decaf and just it doesn't seem possible, uh, I figure if I want decaf, I'm going to have to just settle with medium roast. So uh, that's what I've been doing lately. It would be nice to take advantage of this beautiful weather 
and do a little bit more walking. Uh, we could walk around town, but the town of Sebastopol here is pretty tiny, so that wouldn't take us very long. Uh, and I will need to find another place to park, I think, if I'm going to do any more walking. Uh, parking restrictions downtown here are pretty tight, so I'll have to move pretty soon uh, from this spot. So we might as well just go to a park uh, here. Uh, there are a ton of parks around Sebastopol. Uh, there's one that I haven't been to yet. It's on the other side of town. So let's go over there and hopefully find some trails that are not quite as muddy as the ones we had this morning. On my way over here, I all of a sudden thought, hey, I wonder if I have to pay for parking. And sure enough, it is paid parking here. It's seven bucks to park in there. If it were earlier in the day, I probably would have just paid the $7 and parked in the lot but since there's uh just public parking on the street here i just opted for that instead uh we're not going to be very long and rather fortunately i parked here where i can get some sun on my solar panels although those need to be cleaned so uh they're, they're pulling in quite a bit of power but definitely gonna have to clean those at some point here no just no I really should have known about the parking fee here because that's pretty common uh, for Sonoma County. Here, uh, all of the parks here seem to have parking fees if you're going to park in the lots. Uh, so I should have known that. And it was in the back of my mind that there may have been a parking fee. Um, there is a pass that you can get, and I think it's $50 for the year, but I didn't look into that pass because I didn't think I'd be around here for this long. I've been here for, well, almost three months, I guess. I don't know, maybe it's been two and a half, something like that. Uh, a lot longer than I was anticipating staying here, but I might look into the pass next season because uh, I definitely will be back in Sonoma County next winter because weather here uh, is just incredible over the winter time. So nice place to be in the winter. Oh, this park is uh, a little hilly, so it has some natural drainage, something we didn't have at the uh, park this morning. So these trails are much drier, although there are a couple that are uh, pretty wet, and there was one that is actually closed, it's so wet, uh, flooded out. So uh, better in improvements anyway. There are a lot of people out here, but this park is so big, that uh, it's very peaceful, even though it's uh, packed with people. Plenty of spaces to get out away from everybody else. So uh, this is a nice spot. I like this. Um, glad I finally got out here. I've been meaning to get out here, but uh, I just have not spent a whole lot of time around Sebastopol lately just because of the parking situation. Uh, very rarely park at night in Sebastopol just because it's just so packed. And there's so, just so many parking restrictions that I've kind of stayed away from here. It's kind of a day spot for me. I'll come out for the day and then uh, usually just go back into Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa is so much easier to park in at night, which is what I do. I just park on a street, just like I did this morning. Uh, just park on a street anywhere. And uh, there's a ton of that in Santa Rosa. There's just not a lot of it here in Sebastopol. Uh, definitely worth a place to come to though, just because it's just so nice and peaceful out here. Uh, coffee as well out here is pretty awesome. It's funny, I'm taking my time just meandering around. I stop and check out the view when I get up on top of a little hill. Yeah, it's just been nice and relaxing. Uh, and every few minutes, there's a guy that's jogging the trails here. He keeps passing me by. Uh, this happens quite often, actually, uh, whenever I go walking somewhere. Uh, if I'm walking through a mall, I'm walking as fast as I can go. Uh, if I'm out on a trail like this, I'm walking as slow as I can go. And so I tend to have this happen where people are jogging or something and they just keep going by me. I feel like I'm being lapped on a racetrack. 
<laughs> Not that it matters, I just find it kind of funny. And then look at the synchronicities that happen. As I say, I feel like I'm on a racetrack. I then step onto blacktop. Funny. And now we're back on the trail again. I uh, brought a Lara bar with me for a little snack. Although I didn't bring any water, so this is probably not the best idea to eat this because it's going to make me thirsty. But I'm a little bit hungry, so I'm going to dive in here. Uh, this area with all the moss on the trees is kind of reminding me of the Pacific Northwest. Uh, it's making me kind of homesick. Um, I'm not really from the Pacific Northwest, but it has been home sort of for the last few years. So I'm uh, getting that vibe here. It's a, it's a good vibe. The jogger just lapped me again. I think it's the same guy. Kind of funny. He's running the whole time he's here. I'm not moving hardly at all the whole time I'm here. I prefer my method much more than his. Well, that was fantastic. And I uh, really only scratched the surface of that park. It's uh, huge. Lots and lots of trails, uh, bigger than I was uh, anticipating it to be. So that's good. Um, I came back to the van because I need some water. I'm also getting a little bit tired. Uh, when I was in the sun, it feels a little bit warm, although I don't think it actually is warm. Uh, I do have this wool shirt on, which is kind of like a sweater. I usually call this a sweater because uh, it can be a little bit warm. Um, I'm much more comfortable in the shade, but uh, I'm thinking now that I've got my water here, I'm thinking uh, maybe we'll head into town and I can get some more coffee. So good, there, there'd be a good reason to go back into town and get some more coffee. I'm just reminded of something here. Uh, I've been getting a question. It's been almost every day I've been asked this lately. Uh, when am I going to get a bigger van? Or do I want a bigger van? Or do I want an RV? And it's getting kind of tiring for me to answer this because I've answered it so many times. In fact, I've had whole videos dedicated to just answering that one question. And the answer, if you haven't seen any of the dozens of videos that I've made answering that, uh, the answer is quite simple. No, I don't ever want a bigger van. Um, I don't see the point in a bigger van. Uh, minivans are perfectly sized, I think, uh, mostly because on a day like today, I want to be outside. You know, now yesterday, I was inside quite a bit uh, more than I wanted to be. I did get out and walk a little bit yesterday because that is what I base my life around. I want to be outside as much as possible. Uh, but since I didn't get out a whole lot yesterday, I wanted to double down and getting out today, and I've done that so far. Uh, there's still time left today to get out uh, a little bit more, too. That being the case, since I'm outside all the time, or most of the time, there's very few times that I'm stuck inside. It's just I've got health problems, and so there's times where I'd, I'm stuck inside, and that's uh, you know, that's unavoidable on the cases where I just get a little health issue flare up. And that's, you know, that's just a, a time where I have to spend a little more time sleeping. I spend a little more time in bed. Um, having a bigger van doesn't help me with that at all. Uh, in fact, having a smaller van makes it easier because I don't have to move around quite so much. Uh, everything is kind of within reach uh, in a smaller van. So that's uh, kind of a plus on having a smaller van. Um, at least for me it is. It's a, it's a huge plus. Uh, the days where I'm not feeling good, I can move around less, which is fantastic. I mean, it makes my, makes my time where I'm not feeling well uh, go a little bit more smoothly, if that makes sense. And I guess it doesn't make sense to the majority of people, uh, which is why they keep asking me the same question over and over again. Um, and I say they because uh, there are a lot of you, and I'm not trying to point fingers, but a lot of you ask me this on a regular basis. Am I going to get a bigger van? Uh, because I guess you're thinking that I'm going to change my mind at some point. When I first started out, I would have said maybe getting a bigger van later on would be good. But at this point in time, uh, and I, I thought this last year and the year before, 
Uh, I don't ever want a bigger van. Uh, I, I would like a minivan or something minivan sized. I'm bringing this up now because of the shoe situation this morning. So I've got these muddy shoes and they're half dry now. Uh, the shoes dry really quickly, but um, I don't really have a space to put them to let them dry. Now I could put them up front. Uh, I don't like to leave things up front. Uh, I just think it's not a good idea to leave anything that looks like it might be valuable behind a thin piece of glass, if you know what I mean. Um, so that's, that's one reason why I don't put these up front. But, you know, I'm limited on space back here, so I don't have a lot of space to put these and to let them dry. And that's the only thing that I've found over the years, that's the only thing that I've found is that it does get a little bit tight for space. Um, like jackets, I hang my jackets up, but uh, it's a little tight for that. Even like this jacket I have on top of my pillows because it normally hangs here by the door, but it interferes with me getting in and out. When I get in and out, it falls off. So, you know, there's, the, there's those few, very, very few instances where having a little bit more space so that I could hang something up a little bit easier or set something down on the floor a little bit easier might be easier with a bigger van, but I can't justify having a bigger van for any other reason. Uh, that's the only two things that I have found uh, that might be better to have more space. And that's just not enough uh, for me to want a, a larger space. Uh, I don't need a bigger box. This is plenty big, especially when I'm outside most of the day, uh, because outside is where I want to be. And so since I'm outside all the time, that is what is important to me. The little box that I own that keeps the few things that I have isn't important at all. Uh, as long as I can sleep comfortably, clean up and cook, uh, the rest of it just doesn't really matter much. Now, I didn't mean to imply that you shouldn't ask me questions. If you have questions, please ask them. I will do my best to answer them. Uh, I am a little bit behind on questions to answer. Uh, I've been getting a number of questions and comments on my videos, and it's been a little bit difficult to keep up, but I am doing my best to get back to them. If you do have a legitimate question, I will definitely do my best to answer it. Uh, so there's, there's that. Uh, please ask away if you have questions. Uh, just don't send me an email because I'm about nine months uh, behind on emails. So if you send me an email, you're not going to get an answer for a very, very long time. Just so that you know. Well, now that we have that taken care of, let's go take care of some coffee because I want to have some more coffee on hand and I wouldn't mind another cup of coffee too. So we're going to go down to Retrograde Coffee Roasters. Uh, it's a small little local roaster. I believe they only have the one location here in Sebastopol, and I think it's on Main Street. Uh, it's at least down in the main section of downtown Sebastopol. Uh, the only problem now is we're going to have to go through the traffic again. Let's hopefully uh, find that it's lighter this time, but it's probably not going to be. So I'm going to grip my teeth now. Would you look at that, a Kimbo camper on an old Toyota Tacoma. You don't see many of those Kimbos around. Those things are awesome. I'm just saying that to confuse everybody now because after I said that big long spiel about how I don't ever want anything other than a minivan, now everybody's gonna say, well, what do you mean? What do you mean a Kimbo is awesome? Uh, traffic's pretty light, so not too bad. Much better than this morning anyway. Uh, I parked several blocks up and then I'm going to walk back just so I can get a little more walking in. Why not on such a beautiful day like today? This is such an awesome little town, Sebastopol here. Uh, I really like it here, but it's so busy. It's the only reason why I don't spend more time here, but it's just a really cool town. Uh, lots of nice people around. And as I was saying before, uh, lots of great coffee places. Uh, my favorite of all of them though is the one that we're heading to right now. And here it is, Retrograde Coffee Roasters. Uh, of all the places here, this is my favorite. Uh, but again, there's a lot of really good coffee shops here. Uh, 
Uh, what a great little place that is, Retrograde Coffee Roasters, and I really like their logo. It's just a fun little logo. One of these days I might buy a sticker from them, although I'm trying not to buy stickers anymore because I just don't like sticking them up anywhere. Although I have been turning them into uh, magnets. You can buy some magnet sheets. So like this one from Chrome, this is an old one that he gave me years ago. This is his old dog, uh, Disco. Uh, so this is kind of a special sticker to me. Um, so because I never stuck it on anything, I just stuck it on a piece of that magnet film. And now I just have it as a magnet so I can kind of move it around a little bit because it would bother me if I stuck this on something that then uh, wore out and I had to replace. So now at least I can move it around as I need to. So that's what I've been doing with stickers lately. Anyway, back to the coffee. I know this seems like a lot of coffee. I've got the bag from Retrograde and the tin from uh, Taylor Lane. Um, I've been trying to keep some decaf around and I am actually half out of the decaf that I've been working on and the regular coffee that I've been working on. So I figured since I'm here, might as well try out the stuff that is supposed to be really good decaf wise. And then of course, I know this one's really good. I've had this one before. Uh, really, really fantastic coffee. The funny thing with this one is they have it labeled as a medium roast, but it's actually a lighter roast. And so I just really like this one. Um, I've had a couple of their coffees, uh, but this is my favorite of all of their coffees. I believe this is their house blend. So whatever you're drinking when you order a regular coffee is this Milky Way, I think. Uh, and because I bought a bag of coffee, they gave me a free cup of coffee to go. So that's good. I can enjoy this a little bit so I don't have to uh, fire up the stove and make one myself. I can just be lazy. Well, I think I'm going to end this here. Uh, it's early yet, but I've got some work to do and I've been working a little bit better, at least being a little more efficient when I'm working at night. So I'm going to try to get a little bit of work done tonight. And uh, that means I've got to go find a parking spot. I'm not even going to try to look for a parking spot here in Sebastopol. I'll just go back down to one of the spots down in the city that I know uh, I can get. Uh, otherwise, I may have to search around for a spot. And I just don't feel like doing that. I need to uh, do some work. So I got to find a parking spot, uh, get set up and try to be productive tonight. So that means uh, this is it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.